All right, so this is uh, my self-developing pinhole camera that I made for the Homemade Camera Podcast Self-Developing Camera Challenge. Um, basically, it's a pinhole camera that doubles as a developing tank that I can develop the paper negative, or um, in this case, paper positive, inside the camera. So the way it works is um, it's got this rear box, which you put a piece of photo paper in, uh, basically six by six, a little larger with a border. And then it's got... Um, this outer box uh, that's got a light baffle that it slides into and this inner part holds the paper flat at the back. Um, standard pinhole cameras usually will have the shutter on the outside of the pinhole, but I put the shutter on the inside um, much like a dark slide on a 4x5 film holder and the reason I did that is um, so you would load the paper, take your picture, close this up. Now while this shutter is closed you can actually remove this pinhole and swap it with a light baffle. So uh, this baffle will allow you to uh, pour water or blow air through it, but it won't let any light through. And so once you screw this baffle on, oops, now you can open up the dark slide and pour liquid in and out of the box without, um, without any light getting in. So uh, we're going to go take a picture. Um, Here's the, here's the dark slot. Uh, we're going to go take a picture with a pinhole and develop it inside the camera using my uh, the direct positive process, the reversal process that I used in my last video, and hopefully make a direct positive directly in the camera without having to use a dark room for anything but loading the camera. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, cut a piece of paper that's uh, like 63 millimeters square and stick it in uh, the back of this camera. That piece of paper is already cut. Aha, uh -huh, magic of cinematography. Um, make sure I have the right side facing up. I'm going to stick it down in that box. Slide that guy shut. And make sure the dark slide is closed. Using my light meter app, um, I figured it, that the ISO of this paper for uh, reversal process is about 0.8. And my Aperture is two or 0.2 millimeters in diameter, and it's about a 50 millimeter focal length, which is kind of wide angle. Um, and so I've calculated it's about f 250. Um, so let's see what my light meter says. How long I've got to shoot? Oh, that's 13 minutes. That's not going to be. Uh, that's going to be really annoying. Let's pick a brighter spot. Actually, um, let's see. Go stand in front of this door, Dennis. Here, F250, now we're looking at two minutes over. Ah, fucking A. Okay. So? I don't have the sunscreen for this. Okay. You ready? No. Okay. So, I've calculated it's about a two minute exposure of Dennis, who's filming me right now. Um, and so he's going to put the camera down, um, and I'm going to set a timer for two minutes. Um, and we'll see what we get. How about you burn here instead? Okay. So the whole idea of this is it's a daylight process, so we don't need the dark room anymore. Um, first thing you do is make sure that this shutter is closed, this dark slide. Then you can remove the pinhole. Put that over here. We are doing this in a dark room, but you need not. You can do it out in the light or the daytime. Um, so now that I've got the light baffle on, I can pull the dark slide and it will not expose anything to light, but I can pour some liquid in here. Uh, first, I'm going to start with Dectol. I'm just going to pour in basically enough to cover uh, cover the paper inside. I can feel that that's sloshing around in here. I'm going to use a darkroom timer. Normally, I just use an iPhone or count. Uh, but about a minute should develop this pretty much to completion. So give it some gentle agitation uh, while it's doing its thing. This should be a familiar process to anybody who's developed film in a daylight tank, um, which I suppose most of you have if you're watching this. Um, okay, so we've gone about a minute. Um, now, normally I just dump this down the sink or whatever, but I poured in a little bit of extra chemistry. I'm sure it's not exhausted, so I'm just going to dump it into this developer tray uh, to save some of it. going to give it a rinse with water. Um, you know, your standard water bottle will do for this if you're outside. It's a little easier to film inside. 
give it a rinse off. Because we're going for a reversal process, the next thing I'm going to do is pour in some citric acid. Um, just a little bit and swish it around. Alright, so I've swished it around in the citric acid a little bit. I'm going to pour that out. Again, I'm just pouring it into this tray, although you can, you know, pour it in a waste bucket or down the sink with some water and that's fine. But, um, again, I poured in a little extra so that uh, it would for sure work in this, uh, in this video. And I'm just recapturing some of that. So now you've poured in a little citric acid. We're going to pour in um, hydrogen peroxide, which is a bleaching agent. Um, and that, it's okay if I spill them over the hydrogen peroxide tray anyway. Um, what this should do is uh, take all of the silver salts that are uh, blackened by first a photon and then the developer and remove them. Um, eventually that will saturate and then I use the citric acid again to um, remove the silver ions from the hydrogen peroxide and repeat a couple times um, until the paper is totally white. Um, now that the developing process has basically been stopped by that citric acid, um, I could probably open this guy up at this point um, and take a look, but I'm going to give it a full, let's say, minute in the hydrogen peroxide before I check the, uh, check the bleaching. Uh, We've got about 30 seconds in here. One more bleaching. So I'm going to open this guy up now. Oh, we can see it's totally bleached and I've used way too much bleach in here. Um, I can set aside the camera body at this point uh, to be rinsed off later. That's important. That it's nice and clean before you go shooting your next exposure. So I'm going to pour that out. Um, well actually, you can see um, there's a little bit of a residual image here. And so I want to make sure that that's totally gone to have a nice clean positive. So I'm going to give it another uh, little bit of citric acid. I don't know if you can see that on this camera, but no, I can't see it. There was a little, yeah. If there's any residual dark areas on the print, you're going to want to continue repeating citric acid and hydrogen peroxide until it's totally white. Pour out the citric acid, a little hydrogen peroxide. You really need only about that much, just enough to cover the cover the image. Yeah, and now that's totally bleached white. And, uh, because we're doing this in daylight, uh, everything that was negative or, or uh, dark uh, in the image and undeveloped in the initial developing should be exposed and ready to be developed. So I'm going to take this over here and rinse it just so I don't um, ruin the developer. And if you have cuts on your fingers, that hydrogen peroxide is going to sting, but it will disinfect you nicely. Um, so now I'm going to pour in a little bit of uh, regular old Bechtol, any sort of phenol will do. And now we have a direct positive developing in camera. And that's my pinhole picture of our lovely assistant and cameraman, Dennis. You might oh. want to do this with gloves if you have, uh, you know, little cuts on your fingers from trimming 3D printed parts all day. Alright, pour that out. And again, you could stop and fix, but that's not necessary because all of the silver salts left on here should be black. And if we leave them open to the environment, they'll be black. So I'm just going to rinse it off and pull it out. In the field, you might want to get like a rinse bucket and just toss it in the bucket of water. Rinse it really well when you get home or, uh, you know, if you've got access to a hose or a couple gallons of water, that's cool too. And I'd say that's a nice pinhole picture. Uh, of my friend Dennis, uh, taken from the top of my Jeep. Can you see it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks very much for watching. I can't wait to see what everybody else makes 
in their self-developing cameras. Uh, and I hope some people use this uh, reversal process to make some direct positive prints and get some even better results than me. Thank you.